everyone, I'm Chester44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Queen's Wish, The Conqueror! Last episode, we went into Vitasa here and did some exploring in order to see what we could find. And learn. And we learned more about the Owen. Now the time has come, I'm going to try and make our way to our fort so that we can clear it out. There is a patrol of soldiers watching the lands around Vitasa. They have uniforms of the Vol. These are loyalist soldiers. They are very alert and very nervous. When they see who you are, they approach and speak with you, relieved that you aren't going to kill them. Greetings to you. Greetings, envoy. Please be careful on these roads. There are raiders and brigands everywhere. We want you to stay safe. We, safe. we want no troubles with Haven. Anything nearby of interest? The city of Atasa, the most lovely city in the world. We wish we were inside its walls now. Goodbye. Good day. Stay safe. They march on. Oh! Who's this? There's an old, grizzled Vol stoneworker sitting by this low fire. He's taking a break from his carving. His tools are nearby, and rows of stones in various degrees of carvedness stretch off to the north. Hello, traveler. I am Obro. Please join me by the fire. You do. What is your business? I work the stone. It gets carted into Vitasa. I select the finest pieces and have it brought here. Then I work it into fine carvings, suitable for the best homes on Sacramentum or back in Haven. Good pitch. Thank you, Commander. And thank you. I remember when I was an apprentice and my master sold his work to Havenites. They dealt fair, paid their debts, and had good taste. I remember. Are you an Owen, a Masha? He points at his cheek. Do I bear the mark? No, I am good at business. I have avoided falling into debt, so I am not an Owen. I also do not want Owen for my own. It is not my way. Can I buy something from you? Mmm, I sell fine building supplies, intricate carvings, not something useful for your force here. But... He pulls a stone from his pouch. It's a little larger than your fist. A strange, pearly, glittering material unlike anything you have seen. I found this in a shipment of marble. I don't know what to do with it, but it is unique. I will give it to you for 50 coins. What does the rock do? I don't know. Glitters? I only know I've never seen one before, and I've been working stone for a long time. Sure, I'll buy your rock. You pay him. You get the rock. It's slightly warm to the touch. You put it in your pack. Can I buy something from you? Okay, goodbye. Safe travels. Drink lots of water. The heat speaks up on you. Is it what I think it is? Glitter stone. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, let's just open bit here. And it looks like I found the fort. You are close to the ruins of Fort West Bay, one of Haven's seven outposts on Sacramentum. Though it was abandoned decades ago during the Calamity, it is very well preserved. The stone buildings sat undamaged in the dry weather. A good sweeping and they'll be ready for your forces to move in. And Haven is ready for it. South of the fort you see a huge camp of your people. General Aquila has been sneaking workers and supplies into Vol lands. A lot of them. Many in the Vol want Haven to return. They are camped to the south of the empty fort now, awaiting your orders. Hmm, this is good. Let us go investigate, then. I'm just going to take a quick look around the fort first. There are several large farmhouses ringing Fort West Bay, waiting for settlers to come and rebuild them. The few patches of land in the Vol that can support crops are very valuable. I imagine so. All right. You approach this camp. There are a bunch of Haven workers sitting by the fire, fanning themselves to keep cool. One old man rises, approaches you, and kneels. I am Chief Gervin. General Aquila sent us out here. We're ready to work. We can reclaim Fort West Bay now. We just need the order. How did you get here? We just traveled. The Vol soldiers ignored us. I suspect the General already made a deal with Vitasa. Not my business, of course. What will the Vol think of us rebuilding this fort? I think they will welcome it. The Marshals want us to win the war for them and make them all rich. I'm just following my orders anyway. I give the order. Get to work. Gervin turns and says, You heard the Prince. Get to work. The sweaty, dusty soldiers and craftsfolk rise to their feet. Then they stroll into the ruins of Fort West Bay. You can now collect resources from mines you control in this region. You can now recruit Vol characters in your, in your forts. They have new special abilities. To recruit a character, enter the fort and press the Edit Party button. 
All right, and we leveled up. Now that you have rebuilt one of your forts, it's a good idea to install shops into it. This is how you get stronger characters and the best equipment. All right, first a level up. Rupert! Uh, da, 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 da. No magic there. Actually, the extra energy would be good. Majory would actually be useful. Uh, but actually I do kind of want the extra healing. So, get the extra healing. So that you can do that. That's a good idea. Alright, Elspeth! You are our warrior. You've got Bullrush. I haven't used it much. Slow, weaken, and confuse. Terrifies all enemies near you. Hmm. Despite all these abilities, there must be something here. You know what? I think... I think the resistance would actually be a fairly good idea. You know what? Get blood... Uh, hmm. You know what? Yes. Get steel skin so you have more resistances. Terrence, our support. Restoring rain would be quite useful. I think. Grab that. Plus ten bonus to speed. And our mage, Patricia. Uh, let's see here. Um, there are many spells and the like that would be useful. Go ahead and get Shockwave. So that you have it. Right, and we can get someone. We can make a Vol character. Has special abilities that protect your group from enemy attacks. Okay, we can actually specify. We'll just go with the uh, the unique thing there. Extra details. All right, and for the name of a Vol, let's just throw in. Jurin. That's basically going to be... Oh, I can't add... Alright, let's remove Patricia for a sec and add Jurin so that I can see what his cultural abilities are. Spell Shield. Provides a spell shield to an ally for three turns. Magical attack evasion will increase by 50%. Sounds useful. Evasion Charm. Provides evasion charm to an ally for three turns. Physical attack evasion will increase by 50%. And Tower of Might gives a 5% chance for all allies within four spaces to evade magical and physical attacks. That's some interesting and useful stuff, but I don't think I'm going to use him. We're going to stick with Patricia for now. Now let's look around the fort, see what we got. Got two buildings there. There's a building there building in here that we can build in. And in here. There's a lot of buildings here. Oh, right! They're all cramped together because we have, uh... We have the docks in the middle. That explains it. Forgot about the docks. Uh, looks like there's a building over here. Ah! Okay, this is the jail. Prison. Whatever. Guard post, basically. Okay. It appears to be the rest there. Over here we have Chief's Hall. Okay. Let me see here. We have one building there. Two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight. I think eight is the amount that we can do, if I remember right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight. So there's room for one of each. Metal is something we really need. And I'd really like a smithy so that I can get better weapons. But it costs such a high main maintenance cost that I can't really afford it. The apothecary I could afford easily, and it... And the... Oh, no. Not the Quicksilver. I don't have enough. 
actually, what is... Oh! Our earnings went up, as I expected. Oh god, we're gonna get six stone every... every turn. One metal, two wood. No more quicksilver. So we can't do anything with uh, quicksilver. Weaving room I could easily do. I don't care about that. Carpenter I could do. Barracks, that costs metal. Mill. I mean, I could do a mill that would get us money, but I don't care about that. <sighs> Alright, let's just speak here. Alright. Chief Gervin. The chosen chief of Fort West Bay is an old hand, one of the stony professionals who have kept Haven running and vassals in line for centuries. When you enter, he automatically rises and kneels. He is showing respect. His actual respect will have to be earned. Welcome, Prince. I am Chief Gervin. Fort West Bay has been established, and I am ready to give a report. Give me your report, Chief. He returns to his seat. As expected, Vitasa gave General Aquila no trouble as getting supplies and soldiers out here. We are well positioned, far from the worst battles of the Rebellion. Vol merchants are stopping by now. They are being very polite. There's a lot of suspense. Suspense why? The Vol is experiencing a civil war. On one side, the Masha, the rich, and the owners. On the other, the Owen, the owned, who are fighting for independence, freedom, economic reforms, the standard list. The war is in a stalemate. Haven's fine soldiers could help either side win. Everyone is wondering if we will continue our old policy toward this uh, vassal. What policy would I continue? Queen Sharon supported the Marshas and kept them in power. They paid Haven very well for the aid. And they are looking to me to solve this problem? Of course! Who in a war would turn down immediate victory? He sounds oddly bored talking about all this as if he's reading from a shopping list. Whatever side we help, we Im I imagine it would then be easy to make them our vassals again. What do you think I should do? Now he is surprised. That is the first time one of your rank actually asks my opinion on such a high matter of state. There are so many factors, such complexity. I, I am flattered greatly, Prince. Now please let me know what Fort Westbay can do for you. You note that he never actually answered the question. I want to learn about the Vol. You are surprised by how much this question surprises Chief Garvin. No, about them? I suppose I can tell you what I know. I don't usually learn about the vassal nations I serve in, just enough to run the fort and follow the orders. Tell me about the people of the Vol. I would refer to you to, you to Sage Albinian. Albinin. Our sages tend to do more collecting of intelligence. She could provide more insight than this old soldier. What about the history of the Vol? History? I guess they have a lot of it. Tragic stories of the harsh hot sand swallowing up cities, that sort of thing. It's an unpleasant place. Then again, every vassal always wants to fill your ear with how horrible their lives are. I want to know about the Owen and the Masha. Ah, there is the unavoidable business. It's a standard vas vassal squabble, common really. Still requires attention and judgment to entangle it in the most productive way. I don't have any opinions on it. How have you seen similar situations play out with other vassals? We pick a side, help them win. Then, as long as they live up to the conditions of their treaty with us, they can do what they want. Within reason, of course. What if I ordered you to have an opinion? I would ask you for a briefing of the situation. You will tell me enough that I would figure out your opinion. Then I would have that opinion. The only correct answer is whatever you say. How can you not have an opinion about such a big thing? It's not a great idea for a chief like me to get too involved in the matters of the vassals. Haven always tries to leave vassal religions and traditions alone. The only exception is if they have a practice so gruesome or intolerable that we absolutely can't stand to be near it. What would an intolerable situation be? Mass human sacrifice, that sort of thing. Then we use our soldiers to force them to stop. Happily, when a situation gets that bad, they're usually happy to be forced to stop. Chief Gervin sits at his desk and fans himself. His tanned skin shows the wear of a dozen postings in a great variety of hostile environments and treacherous vassal nations. Tell me about yourself. Well, I was going to retire. Then Queen Sharon sent for me. 
Since the Prince of Haven would be on this miserable land, she wanted to make sure the best were here to help. For some reason, she thought that included me. Surprised I got this post. It's a valuable one. You were going to retire? Yes. Not sure how I felt about that. I do have two grandchildren I could chase around. Then again, what is better than serving Haven and keeping us strong? It's an honor to be here. My mother spoke with you. She did. A full audience in the palace. It was something. Had to buy new clothes. She is very serious about the Sacramentum project. The calamity happened during her rule. She wants to make up for that defeat. This is a valuable post. Oh, yes. All chiefs are allowed to engage in a certain amount of graft and mild co corruption. Makes up for our low pay. Trade with the Vol was very profitable, so serving here is a good step for a chief who wants a good amount of coin. Really? Don't you want to be wealthy? He emits a little cough. <coughs> Turns out I managed to accumulate a fair amount of coin in my many other postings. I don't really care about the money I can make here. Maybe that is why the Queen selected me. She is a wise one. I want to make this fort stronger. Of course, Prince. We have enough resources to defend ourselves. However, if you want more resources and safer road, I can provide our intelligence. For example, we have a good opportunity to get a new source of stone. I suppose we can use more stone. Fortunately, Haven actually owns a quarry near here. It's called the Blasted Pit. I sent scouts there. There were no soldiers there, but signs of monster activity. If it was reclaimed, I could hire workers to extract stone for us. Where is this quarry? Due south of here. I made sure our scouts repaired the signs. You really call it the Blasted Pit? Havenites are not a poetic people, I understand. I understand that the place is a volcanic fumarole. The name fits. Fire monsters. We're going to be fighting fire monsters in there. Are we entitled to the stone? Albinan's records say it was brought from Thablin before the Calamity. It is still ours by terms of our treaty. What should I do when I am there? Just clear out the monsters. Queen Sharon told me that you were given considerable powers and wanted to practice them in pits like that one. I would not deny you the opportunity. I'm sure. Blasted pit, south and there. We'll make our way there eventually. Okay then, let's take a look to the north. Okay, there's a room over here. Ah, the Sage Albinan. And a scroll of might. Ah, uh, you know what? You can hold on to this. Status of the Bowl, year 465. A report for Queen Sharon III, Empress of the Mighty Empire of Haven. When King Kale declared the Vol a favored vassal, he promised our support should the Owen rebel. This was, at the time, thought a small concession. Since then, we have learned more about the true status of our vassal. The Vol has become more unstable in recent centuries. As the years pass, the Masha have gained a larger share of power and wealth, as slowly more regular Vol fail in society and become Owen. Their high council in Thablin is distant and detached. They do not understand what is happening. Too few owners and too many servants has led to violence and riots, more every decade. We may find ourselves trapped in an ugly war in this barren land and within the lifetime of your great majesty. And I believe that time has come. Treaty of Vassalage, we, all, we already know of that. Volmasha and Vol Owen. I feel like we may have read that. Okay, and anything in here? Oh, that's just a way out. Interesting. Alright, let's speak with the sage. There's a young woman in the robes of a sage here, keeping the records and ledgers of the fort. She is young for a sage. The harsh environment is leaving her pale complexion cracked, and every loud noise makes her jump. The presence of a prince doesn't calm her. She kneels. Welcome. I am Sage Albinan. I will provide all the information I can. How did you come to be here? This is my first mission. I wanted to be in a vassal state. It is how to advance in the army. When a call for volunteers for a big mission came, I stepped forward. Turns out it was for the Sacramentum campaign. Here I am. You don't sound enthusiastic. I've never been in the middle of a war before. We saw a lot of ugly things on the way out here. It's been... an adjustment. Uh, don't worry, Prince. It hasn't phased me. I will still serve well. Sage Albinan talks to you as she tends to the records. Letters and reports are constantly coming in. 
Traders from the Vol are very eager to do business here, war or not. What is your purpose here? I handle the paperwork for the fort. Haven is built on paper. Well, also the finest magical and military training in the known lands, but mainly paper. Also, I've had to spend a lot of time outside looking over the supplies. No quartermaster. Why don't you have a quartermaster? He died on the boat over. Disease. Chief Gervin told me to adjust. Any advice for how I can make the fort stronger? Uh, I couldn't say. Not to a prince. Chief might know. Any extra supplies for me? Nothing that would be an improvement for you, I'm afraid. These forts never get the best stuff. I would ask you one of the three battalion headquarters. Their quartermasters might have potions or other nice things. What is your purpose here? Oh, we already asked that. Uh, tell me more about the vole. She sits up straight. Now she is in her element. Of course. On the boat ride over, when I wasn't sick, I read and reread my books on the vole. Their practices and history. The odd Owen Masha system. They are fascinating, easily classified as hard people, shared by their la shaped by their land, requiring all standard techniques for dealing with such. I'd like to know more about the Owen and Masha. It is interesting. Many people would call the Owen slaves. However, the Masha allow them just enough freedom to leave them their pride. All this while totally controlling their lives. The Vol are hard people. Yes, it comes with poverty and hard environments. All of their energy goes to survival. This burns away sentimentality, sympathy, and weak emotions. This is one of the reasons it took the Owens so long to rebel. Thanks to their upbringing, many of them seem to believe they deserve their punishment. Their land shaped them. It is harsh and dry, very little farmland, lethal scorpions. Most of all spend their lives just a mistake or two from death or ruin, and everyone makes mistakes. As in most places like this, they develop stern exteriors and a very strong code of honor. Ideas of honor and shame control their lives. Stern exteriors. The Vol tend to be grim and humorless, at least when you first meet them. They have humor, it just kind of embarrasses them. To make their lives tolerable, they love luxuries when they can find them. That is why they value oases, and why they make their city so beautiful. Where did this code of honor come from? The Vol have always struggled with each other for survival. The groups with the best, most efficient code of conduct survive. That code turned out to stress responsibility, self-denial, and cooperation, and always paying one de one's debts. Why are honor and shame so important? When a land is so harsh, everyone can be misfor one misfortune from death. The people learn from birth never to do anything to cause that misfortune to another. This is honor. Violating this brings great shame. How is loss of honor punished? Death or shunning and banishment, which tends to lead to death. The exception, of course, is the shame of great debt. This is atoned for by becoming an Owen. It's better than shame or death. Do many vassal states have systems like this? Yes. These vassals are called hard people. We have our own diplomatic protocols for dealing with them. Trade with Haven tends to make these vassals richer and safer. Then the code of honor fades. What fate do such nations have? Slow decline, usually. No ruler or written law can force a citizen to work for the good of a nation. A cultural sense of morality and honor is the most reliable shaper of a citizen. Once this is gone, corruption follows. Huh. Not sure I agree. I'm sorry, Prince. This is Standard Haven Doctrine, but Standard Haven Doctrine is set by you. You can always change my views for me later. Uh, but now I'm rambling. I'm sure these debatable lectures are not helpful to you. Perhaps. Uh, we've got an upstairs here. Who's this? You meet a Havenite in dark, severe clothes. He walks from crate to crate, mumbling numbers to himself and checking a clipboard heavy with ledgers. Occasionally, he consults one as he looks inside a crate. Even up close, he ignores you until he sees the royal insignia on your chest. One prince. Noted. He doesn't make eye contact. He just marks his clipboard. I am Natch Snooch, Royal Auditor. What is a Royal Auditor? He looks past you as he answers. I verify our current inventories, our resources, coin, and such for the Queen. I make sure all the numbers align. What do you mean, numbers align? 
I look for inconsistencies in numbers between what officials and sages report having and what is actually present. What happens if you find inconsistencies? This indicates corruption which will not be tolerated. The Queen was explicit. It is in Haven's interest that graft, bribery, thievery is kept to acceptable levels no matter how remote the vassal is. Thus, I investigate all inconsistencies. Typically, I find who is responsible and deal with it before they try to kill me. Now please excuse me, Prince. Chief Gervin undercounted his supply of medium ceramic jugs by at least three. You work for my mother? His mind gives a little confused kilt. tilt. I work for Mindwill, Mindwill, and, Sno and Snooch. We have one client, the Queen. You've heard of them. They are your mother's private accounting firm. Apparently they do more than just giving you your allowance of gold every week. Are you THE Snooch of Mindwill, Mindwill, and Snooch? No, that was my great-grandfather, Bushrod Snooch. Like me, most of his descendants have joined the firm. I hope my children will do the same. Why the clipboard? The Queen requires documented verification. Ordered organization is key to see if the numbers align. Okay, that's basically that. Oh, and in here? Not mine, I can't take it. Unfortunate. In here? Absolutely nothing. An empty box. And in here? Another box? No one sees anything. Okay, that's a few things. So now we have a fort. A second fort. What does this one produce? I'll need to open up the map to see. This fort produces two wood, three stone, one metal. Which is much less than, I, than I'd like. I want more metal. I have plenty of stone. The wood, though, the wood is actually nice. We're making two wood at a time now. Is there anything I can make here? I can make a weaving room. I'm not going to make a barracks. Everything costs so much, I can't afford any of it. I mean, guard towers would be something for somewhere, but no, I can't do that here. The only thing I can buy here is a weaving room. Which would actually increase the size of our backpacks by one, which would be useful. Uh, I mean, I suppose I can afford it. You know what? Sure, I'll put the weaving room here. Yes, construct this building. And here we are going to build the weaving room. We have enough, we can afford it. There. And this weaving room will go in here. There we go. And now, because I like putting up a bit of decoration, well, let's see, we need a shop banner for outside, and a couple decorations. That's what's going to go here. Shop banner outside. Weaver, I want a bigger backpack. Okay, we should have a bigger one now. New cowl. We could get one. An acolyte's towel. Costs money. What about the robe? We can get fiery robes, which... Actually... Would be better than what we have. What she has is blessing duration, but I don't care about that. What I care about is magical damage. So I think we can buy this... Give that to her, and that I'll have to sell to someone if I can find it. How many are we going to need to buy? One, two, three, four, five. It's like six levels. This is going to be bothersome. Do I want a new cowl? No, it's not really going to be that helpful. So, that is all. Okay, we have one building, and now our backpacks should be more open to things. So that's good. Okay. Current upkeep. Oh, I forgot to put the uh, the shop banner in.
It has to go right there. Weaver. Not exactly what I wanted, but I guess it'll work. Is there any directions, any uh, decorations I want to put in? Actually, I do feel like... Well, do we really need a well? I mean, then again, I guess a well would be nice to have. I'll wait until I build structures. But a well would be nice. And other things. For decorations and the like. Eh, yeah, put a statue in somewhere. You know what? I like the idea of putting a statue here. There we go. One statue decoration. We'll decorate more later on. But for now, I think that is good. Said, uh, I think I'm going to do one other thing before I finish this episode. Well, two other things. First, I'm going to travel to Greatport. Takes a while to travel there. See if our delivery arrived. Uh, have my materials arrived yet? No. Okay. And we have so much, uh... So much of some of our resources, but no matter. Okay, that done. We're going to run into this town so I can sell a thing or two and deposit some res and deposit that other stone I found. And yes, I do have one more space. All right. And also, I should see any messages for me. Yes. You hear Sutter's voice, sounding even more jolly than normal. So, Rupert, you did it! You built your very first fort! Seeing the wall is rebuilt, the settlers moving in, smell the first bread baking. Satisfying, isn't it? Our people stranded here need places to live. Yes, the people of our abandoned colony need safe homes. Our people here need trade, and so do the people there. The more backward people of Sacramento need the wisdom of Haven to guide them. Yes, a good day's work indeed. You want to know what I think? Has my opinion ever stopped you? I think you are not done. Construction and contribution are addictive. So is wealth and power. I think this is not the last fort rebuilt. Do you doubt it? What right do we have to build forts on their land? Their land? Their land! Each of our forts is built on Haven territory. They deeded it to us when our treaties were signed. When the calamity happened, they stole it back from us. You are only reclaiming what is rightfully ours. Is it right to rebuild the forts? Oh, I leave it to Delia to fuss about those moral issues. Don't worry, there are many of them and few of us. If they tire of us, they can evict us in an instant. They've done it before. But that's enough for now. I'm quite busy here. I'm sure you are. Ugh, diplomatic envoy from Sir Pendal. Big banquet, lots of speeches. They'll give us a statue or something. Mother will have to buy a new, build a new museum. You say something, but there is no response. He walked off. Somehow I'm not surprised. Okay then, let's uh, put this glitter stone in here. And now I'll just go down and take care of uh, selling this thing. And then that is going to be the end of this episode that, please. Thank you. And that is going to be the end of this episode, because this one has pretty much gone on long enough. Also, my throat aches. Next episode... Um... Hmm. I think, perhaps, we can go and take care of the blasted pit. Simp uh, yeah, Blasted Pit. We can clear out this area here near this uh, fort. Then we'll make our way east and take a look at Merba. But that'll be in the next episode. So, until then, I'm Trusted44. That is, uh... Rupert, Elspeth, Terence, and Patricia. This has been a Let's Play of Queen's Wish the Conqueror. And I shall see you all next time.